Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today we got another easy Dutch oven dish for you. I call Florida Festival Beans. So y'all stay tuned. <music> So a lot of you are asking, what the heck is Festival Beans? I've never heard about that. You know, you probably haven't because I just made it up. Uh, this is a creation of my own, my own um, here over the last couple of days. And, uh, you know, most bean dishes are pretty boring looking. You know, they're just beans and maybe a little meat in there or whatever. So we decided to perk it up a bit, use some of our fresh Florida produce, and give it a beautiful Florida twist. So I guess there's this thing going around from uh, some of the other YouTube channels in this uh, particular cooking uh, genre, especially the barbecue guys, where they tag other people in their video and challenge them to make a dish similar to whatever they're making. So recently I was tagged by Chef Johnny Stewart over in South Texas. Y'all got to go check out his channel. That's Texas Tile Barbecue and Cuisine. Going to leave you a link right down in the description box. Hey, and maybe a little card that'll pop up somewhere over here. But anyway, he did some drunken beans. I can't remember his Mexican name for him. Bracho or something like that. So, uh, you know, I've been thinking about how to come back at him with the, you know, he tagged me in a video. So trying to figure out a beautiful but original bean dish. Um, so here's coming back at you, Chef Johnny. Okay, for the bean portion, the main part of this dish, I have here soaked overnight. These were uh, great northern beans and small red beans. The slow soak method, just overnight and a little bit of salted water. And you know, a lot of people comment all the time about, oh, don't put salt on it, it makes them tough. They don't break down. I don't want them to break down. I want it to be an individual bean uh, when it's done. Okay, I want them to be mush. If you want them to be mush, don't put salt. We have uh, red and white slices, finely sliced onion. We probably won't use all that. Some pepper, some cilantro. We're just going to use a pinch to begin with, a little salt. And this is some leftover uh, ham from, uh, from the holidays. Going to be a little bit of seasoning for them. And so we're going to get a Dutch oven ready and get these bad boys on some fire. Okay, I don't know what the weather's like where you guys are today. It's December 30th. And it, I'm out here in shorts and a t-shirt. And this fire is hot. But I'm sure a lot of other places in the country you can appreciate a warm fire right now. We're going to go, go ahead and set up. We got our number... 10 Dutch oven. We're setting up right now for full bottom heat. All right, so I'm gonna wiggle that guy down there in the cold. One full layer on the bottom. I'm gonna reserve a few off to the side here. Go ahead and take that lid off. You see us 
beautifully seasoned. So go ahead and let her get warmed up and we'll start getting in our beans. All right guys, going in with just a, maybe a tablespoon of olive oil into our hot Dutch oven. It's preheated there a little bit. Just gonna kinda give that a little stir. See it's smoking already. We'll dump in our ham chunks of seasoning ham we've saved. First thing I wanna do is kinda get that little caramelized on it. And Hopefully y'all can see that on chef cam. All right, I'm coming in with the uh, uh, sweet and sweet red and sweet white onions. Just sliver those. They're going to cook all the way down by the time this is done, so don't worry. Man, that smells good. Another thing I like to do at this point is I like to toast my black pepper a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and just put about half of what I got there. Man, that really brings out the aroma of this fresh crack. Just that little bit of toasting raises up the oils in it. Don't want to put a lot of color on this. Just want to go ahead and deglaze it real quick. Hot water. If you got it. And then right on in with our beans. Going to put in a good size pinch of cilantro. We'll save the rest for the end. I'm going to bring the water up to the top of the beans like that. And last thing to go in is some uh, ham broth. This, you know, if I had another ham bone, I would have put made broth with that. But this is uh, some jump some ham on you get this where you get the uh, the chicken broth go ahead and put that in there and that's got quite a bit of salt in it so we're not gonna put a whole lot more salt but beans do need a fair amount of salt I'm gonna put about a half a teaspoon and that's it now we're gonna get the lid on let them come up to a bowl and then we'll adjust them to a simmer All right, so those guys have come up to a nice simmer. Gonna go ahead and give them a final stir. And they're gonna take about an hour to cook. So the great thing about Dutch oven charcoal cooking, is you know the fire's gonna burn down. But we're gonna take a few coals out. So we already got a hot fire and a hot pot. So we're just going to kind of leave a ring around the perimeter. So we'll make sure that we don't evaporate all of our water out of there. That looks pretty good. Put the pot in the middle. We'll check it in a second. See how it's doing. Hey, let's go ahead and go in and see how it's doing on chef cam. Man, that's a perfect simmer right there. So, at this point, pretty much walk away from it. Go do what you need to do. Go fishing. Go do a little hunting. Go a little, do a little gardening like we're fixing to do. And just check on about every 45 minutes or so. Heck, you don't really even have to do that. Them coals are going to burn down way before that's ever going to run out of water.
quick, I wanted to show you a little gift I just got for Christmas here. This uh, comes in this beautiful box, uh, plastic, hard plastic box with a snap-on tight lids. Fold down, very light, very compact little windshield for your Dutch ovens or even your campfire. Let me show you. We're going to set it up on this Dutch oven right now. Okay, here we go. We're just going to, it's an accordion style deal. So we're just going to bring it out. It's got these pins on the end where you could actually completely re-link it. I actually grabbed it by that and pulled it out. Didn't really want to do that. But anyway, whichever way your wind's coming from, you know, you're out of camp or whatever, you just kind of set that up. I guess you, you could take these pins, you can stick them down into the dirt. You know, we're on a hard surface here, so you couldn't do that. But if you're on the actual campfire, you can slide these pins down and it'll kind of hold it that'll stab down into the soil or you know the area around your campfire or you could slide one of them out and relink the whole thing together into a perfect circle but that could work for your campfire heck that work great just for uh you know reflecting heat back onto you if you're if you're camping you know and it's cold out so it's a little windy today so i decided to go ahead and just give this a try Looks like it's gonna work great. I can already feel the heat over here already. All right, the coal's almost burnt down. I went in here and tested a couple of beans and they're just about done. So we're gonna add the rest of the ingredients. You know, those onions we put in there to begin with pretty much cooked down to nothing. So I'm gonna go ahead back with about another two, two or eh, about three tablespoons, finely diced onion. Here's a couple tablespoons of green onion right from our garden scallion. A uh, half cup of diced celery. Half cup of diced Roma tomato. See, I was making that earlier. All right, two tablespoons of fresh cilantro. And here's where it gets interesting about half of a diced mango all right this is what makes this a festival or a carnival dish now juice a half a lime some limes are juicier than others we we'll use the half uh, first and then we'll test it and you got that citrus in there now, so you're going to need a little bit more salt. I'm going to go about a teaspoon kosher salt. Give that a good stir, lid back on, and let all that beautiful veg and colors, you see how colorful that is, come together to lid back on. We'll visit it in about 10 or 15 minutes. All right, so we're done with our uh, little folding windscreen now. I'm gonna show you how easy that is to pack away. Just accordion style, just flop. Okay, comes in this nice hard plastic case. We'll fold these little uh, stakes back. Gonna stick that right back in the case there. Got a little cap for it that right back in your gear just like that all right let's go ahead and plate up these beans that pot's really hot you get a lid to get that lid off of there all right so first thing we're going to do is come over with some of our uh, festival beans here Make sure you get plenty of that juice too from down in the bottom. Then uh, what we got to go with that is uh, some cast iron grilled fish. These are some nice uh, crappie fillets we got over there on the, on the lake. You might have seen that video if you didn't. Go check it out. And of course, uh, right here on the side, right in the old Griswold pan, we got some cornbread. 
right there uh, for just a little garnish coming in with some uh, some sliced shallots that's not shallots these are uh, scallions and just to perk it up a bit a few of uh, fresh Roma tomatoes diced around the plate there and remember we put those in the in the um, the beans also and then a uh, final little twist of lime right there So that's a really beautiful plate. And uh, I'm gonna go in and give it a try. Wow. That mango and the rest of the veg really comes out of the beans. Hey, and those, those fresh scallions and fresh tomato we put on top there add a little bit of crunch. You might have heard that in the mic. You might have got to get another bite of that. that is truly something special. So let's try a little bit with the fish. I might just eat this whole plate right here in front of you. 